tell us a story, Grandpa, about how you used Get to... Get around, kid! Let me tell you a story! So this bike is a friend of ours, Dave, and he was moving to um, up north somewhere. This bike just sat, it was a working bike, and it just sat for 10 years. Some kind of problem with it, and like it wouldn't rev up. He parked it up, that's the end of that. So basically a working bike got parked up for 10 years. Puppy chewed the wiring, you know, the indicators, all that kind of stuff, the classic. And now it's now it's in our workshop. And so what do you plan on doing right now? What's what well, are we this, what, what, what I was doing in the past couple of weeks was I took the carbs off, cleaned them out, blew them out, all the gaskets are shot so I just kind of silicon the bowls on for now, just for like get it going. I just went through and sprayed the connectors, electrical connectors with the uh, contact cleaner and I ordered a battery and now the battery's arrived. Just keen to figure out what we need to actually start it. So that by the end of the tonight, what do you want to achieve? Uh, by the end of tonight I want this thing running, or at least started, at least like couple of bangs or pops that I'd be happy with that. But obviously it'd be good if we can run it for a period of time to see what condition the engine's in. So if the thing is this stage of the project there's no point spending any money on it because if the engine's shot or piston rings because it's been sitting for 10 years you could never anything like there's not much point continuing on because you know there's no parts for these. But if the engine's healthy and it runs and makes sounds then the plan is just to get it regoed just to do the fork seals on it, tidy it up, get in your tires, yeah, just get a rego and <laughs> I want to ride this thing. It revs to 18 grand. That's not that's not trickery. That is real red line. That's 18 grand or 18 and a half even. You know, you think about that. that. That's Formula One territory. That's Formula One. You basically you've got a little miniature Formula One engine in this bike. <laughs> You know, and you know, it's, it's 46 horsepower, which is not that much, but... So it makes the 46 horsepower at about 15,000 up here. Something <laughs> like that, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I think, I think it's probably about on the money, I'd say. Because we've got some spare parts, so you can shoot the head and stuff for it in the box. <laughs> Look how tiny yeah. bell. But it's interesting that they're knife edged the intakes. Like actually like Yeah, okay. There's there's actually a fuel pump. Oh yeah. Came with it, but it, there, there was no fuel pump on it. Yeah. It's like for cold starts, right? Just to build up pressure, right? Well no pressure it just fills the um the bowls up. Yeah. And it just stops. Just like it's almost like it ticks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like you're touching the parts, it's like touching motorsport. Yeah, pretty you know much. I mean? like, yeah, yeah. You got like touching this head. It's like something built for purpose, not like something built to price. Yeah, you know exactly. It's a, and it's a different feel. Things that are built for a purpose, like for racing or just high performance, they just they just look different. Hmm. They feel different in your hand, like you, you know. Oh, it's just, it's been machine. It's a machine. Like, look how nice that is. Like for just a, you know. Just a production bike. All, all care has been taken to make that. Until we got a hold of it. <laughs> got power! <laughs> What's next then? I don't know, I guess we'll just try and hit the start button. Hit the start button. What else is there to do? I don't know. Check the oil. <laughs> Check the oil. Yeah. <laughs> hey? Nah, fuck no, that. So let's run. Yeah. It's not even um. Mm, it's got horn. Horn's trying to work. It's trying. The lights work. No. The light does not work. No, the lights do not work. I'm um, running out of options here. That's the starter button. All right, what do we do? Just bridge the relay, right? Well, first check fuses. I reckon maybe the fuses might be. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, well, how do we? So this is this just stuck on, is it? Is that why the is it rear brake that's on? Or? Why is that on? No, that's just the park park Is it? Yeah. Try the front brake. No. So maybe the brake switch is not working correctly? Yeah. Should we just unplug them? So what, there's like a relay, right? Oh, you said check the fuses. So we've got some mystery wires that the puppy chewed up. Yep. 
Let's have a look at what these are. <clears throat> Why is that bouncing around? So we're just trying to figure out what these wires are for. Yeah. So it looks like, obviously, the yellow are 12 volt. Mm, just splicing in the new new controller. <laughs> it's not even that, that, one's, that one's dead. <laughs> it's not even for this bike. It's not even for this bike. No. Alright. No. Clutch. Oh, we didn't test the switch, did we? No, let's test the switch. Cool. It needs to be neutral, doesn't it? Yeah, well, neutral light is on. Oh, it was on. Oh, there we go. All right, no excuses now. Do you reckon it's going to work? It has to. Football. Yeah. Oh, is it the stand? Stands down. So the stand should be up, right? No, I should start now with neutral in the stand. Oh, okay. Mm. That's disappointing. Oh, oh, it was a what? That, ah, the stop one. All right. Just work that. Right. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, All righty. Right, so now we can rig up a fuel tank to it. All right? Theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Theory, communism works. <laughs> Marge, I agree with you in theory. In theory, communism works. In theory. That's the connector, but it's fragile. That one there, see? This thing. That's the fuel input. Oh, I see. It swivels. Yeah. So hook that up, but just be gentle with it. All right, so we're going to be putting some fuel into this puppy. Yeah. Yeah, after this, what? check the, the oil. Let's just cut it a bit. Well, enough. If oh, enough no. goes into the bowl, yeah, it should be okay. Yeah. All right. So maybe get some degreaser and just prime the carbs too. Of course. Just spray a bit in each carb. Wow. Just does a cycle. Oh, Check that's cycle. cool. We didn't check the oil, didn't we? Yeah. It's fire. Right. Where's the choke? Yeah, on the other side. Full choke. Full chokeage. Full chokeage. Sounds healthy though. Yeah. Have you checked the spark box? No. Oh, this is not even connected. The no, CDI. Yeah. The, the, oh, what do you call damn. it? Damn. Damn dog. Alright, let's connect that. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, the, one of the coils is firing. Alright, go on. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> No way, Jose. What? No way. Let it fly. Oh, it's got no water. It's got no water. That's crazy, man. Man, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> this bike's been sitting for 10 years. We just did some real minimal um, sort of wiring on it and Jeez. we just started up. And yeah. it would have started our first kick if we plugged in the coil. We just unplugged the coil for yeah, some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Alright, just try it again? Yeah. Alright. Holy crap, man, it just starts right up.
put some water in it? Yeah, let's put some water in it. Alright. <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> <people everywhere. laughs> <laughs> set of carbs that came like a disassembled with a bike so I just kind of threw like best parts together but they, I think the carbs probably need a kit or something through it the yeah. diaphragms and oh. the sliders are not sliding up they do, they, they do a little bit a little bit yeah well how about we just warm up the bike a bit You happy? It runs. It runs. It does. Yeah. Sounds okay. It sounds good. Yeah. So it's just the. I don't know. It's just a carburetor issue. Just yeah. I mean, they've got jets. Maybe like the main jets or something. Uh, the, the each carb's got an adjuster on it. Maybe we can just make sure they're all the same. <laughs>
Let's check if it's got oil. <laughs> I mean, it's got no oil. <laughs> it's like ran and Dude, dry. I told you to check the oil. Damn it! <laughs> that was your job. <laughs> Whew! <coughs> Do you reckon there was bits of piston flying yeah, out there? Possibly. <laughs> well, we didn't see an oil light come on. No. But that's not to say that one of these wires that have cut is it's the oil. It's for oil, yeah. yeah. True. We promised it. We promised it and we delivered. <laughs> we got the bike running. So, uh, you know, we've got a, this a new baby, a new project. A high revving Japanese 250. FZR 250 from 1990. Wasn't sold here in Australia. Um, never sold in Australia, just got imported, oh, God, there's a plate on it, someone, uh, Reco imported it, um, and got it compliance, and, um, yeah, and here it is, and like, you, I mean, you can't really talk about this bike without talking about Australian motorcycle laws, right, in, from the, basically, from the beginning of time till the recent, like, mid-2000s, especially in Perth. So in Perth, you have to first get your 250 license, have that for a year, and then you can get your open license. So what was happening when I got my license in 2000, for example, that if you bought a 250, you basically sold it for the same amount you bought it for because they were just in such high demand. I remember you'd be paying three, four grand for a 250 that's, you know, average condition. As long as you didn't crash it, um, you basically bought something for three grand, you rode it for a year, you sold it for three grand. So, 250 class in Australia was very popular up until around mid-2000s when they introduced lambs, which is me. It wasn't the capacity-based limit on your first license, it was a power limit. So they had essentially 600s that were just choked down with restrictors to make certain power um, to pass the, uh, the compliance for the beginner bike. So, um, when that happened, the 250s just kind of became irrelevant. So, why would you have a 250 if you can have a 650 that's just been de choked? Um, basically, you can ride that as your first bike. So, as a result, these bikes became unwanted and just basically rusting out because no one cares about them anymore. But this bike is quite special because it's got an 18,000 RPM red line, it's a four cylinder 250. It's got tiny little pistons, like it's just made to rev. It's a Formula One engine in a bike. Pretty much. You know, and that's why this bike is so awesome. So that's why we're excited about it. And uh, yeah, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel and go to the merch store. Uh, buy some merch, help us out, and uh, you know, tune in each uh, episode. Uh, we'll teach you more things about bikes, cars, anything you want to know, blacksmithing. We're back. <laughs> <laughs>